Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back Wait, to the... Sm- what, did that say 9.9 KDA? For who? For Boosh. Was it really? <laughs> Holy crap. Well, anywho, <laughs> friends and family. What a beast. Yeah, he's he's a savage, bro. I, I'll tell you what. This game's going to be awesome. We have Cog Red taking on Cog Prime. We just saw Snipe. Actually, it's, Come it's back. Cog Red versus Com- Cog Prime and Combat Pause. It's the 2v1 to this week. Was that it? Was Yo, that imagine it happens again, though. No, I'm not. It's right? not going to happen again. It's not. I just want <laughs> one game. I got one game last night. I got one game. You got one game last <laughs> night? Oh, yeah. We did get one game last night that everything went perfectly fine. Yeah. Today, we had, what, like seven pauses already in that game one? Yeah, it was like something. It was close. At least, give or take it's seven. Round, rounding up to the nearest seven. I, I like that. <laughs> I, li- I like that. So, uh, as the players get ready in here, I, let's talk a little bit about Cog Red, man. Sure. What do you like about this team so far in the SPL? I think my favorite part about the team is that they didn't break up. You know, the rumors, you know, have been circulating at this point. They're basically the fact that we were going to see this team leave. They didn't want, you know, yep. they didn't think they had the potential. They win the launch, or uh, they did not win the launch. They won the LAN event. They were close. They uh, <laughs> <laughs> they won the LAN event, and they have done a really, I mean, amazing job. Their team synergy has been incredible, yep. but maybe not to the same level as someone like Cog Prime. What it comes down to is their individual skill is just like just light years ahead of everyone else, and this, at least that's what it seems like. But I think this is where Cog Prime starts to make their comeback. I'm not going to call a winner on the left or the right. What I'm going to say is I think we're going to see a majorly different Cog Prime right now. Well, the one thing I have to ask, and this is actually because of the – ban actually of Kukaklon is stealth and Boosh both oh, love yeah. playing this god what's gonna has that gonna affect one of these teams more than the other you know I don't think so both of them have a very uh, pretty deep god pool okay um and it's funny because stealth is like leading the charge against the camera have you seen the camera yeah. the differences were uh-huh. like, yeah it's just an elevation really yeah and yeah. he's like I can't hit my ones like I don't know what I'm doing please revert this hey I get it man I get it. I him. would complain about everything. I was a pro player. I know. <laughs> I Not of this game. Let's hold the phone with that. But I get it. So uh, Janice and Sirket, uh taken away pretty quickly. Um, we're going to get the option back over to Cog Prime if here. There's No, no. Don't, they're they're going to ban if, if he slips through. No. they're gonna, I thank you, sweet baby Jesus. Oh, you're talking about, Okay. No, no they have to let the – all right. There's Thor. All right. So – Here's yes. what happens. Yeah, if, come Cog, if Cog Red doesn't ban Geb, <laughs> and then Cog Prime doesn't take Geb, then Iana gets Geb, and Cog Red wins so long as nobody pauses. Yeah. I mean, pretty- <laughs> you, you can't beat this kid's Geb. It's not possible. It's- it's, it's invincible. It's true. He is literally the best at it. And right now they're thinking about that. I'm thinking they're saying, okay, there's no way it's going to happen. And – I, I'm surprised he almost didn't just is it? Okay, ban so it. Okay, Mercury's Mercury's incredible. Mercury I mean, is a great ban. And what's funny is, is taking a look at it, the feedback from the community of casuals and pros both want a nerf from Mercury. Well, I mean, he's just funny how he's it ridiculous. Up. He wins. Ju- he's the best jungler. He's one of the best solo laners. He's one of the best ADCs. Like, just forget about it, man. Yeah. He used to be a good support. They nerfed chin size. I don't want to talk about <laughs> it. All right, Geb is going to be locked in for the guys on Cog Prime. That one's going to go ahead and swing over to Jeff Hinla. Cog Red uh, immediately counter locks Ra and Apollo. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Ra's going to have a great presence there. But, you know, Apollo getting in on red is actually huge. Yeah. I, I think they, they always have such good team compositions when they actually have Apollo as their hunter. Right, I mean, because Snoopy is a monster. He never misses he, shots. He, he doesn't. And he loves to be aggressive. And when you have that mesmerized Max Serenade's also going to Ugh. grant you a sick, dis- almost disgusting amount of protections. I think it's 55? I don't play hunters. Are you... Are you yeah, 50. 50. Okay. What Excuse else? me. <gasps> we saw another one. Anua, again, going to be picked up here. This could be for stealth. This could be for Omega. It's likely going to be for stealth. Omega generally favors a little bit more tankiness in his yep. lane. Uh, option back over to the guys on Cog Red. Speaking of tankiness, Devios, um, probably the only tier player left, uh, does have option here. Uh, they still have a lot to pick from. It looks like Hunbot's going to oh. be locked in. That will likely go to Andy. Yeah, and Hunbacks. I actually, we're seeing a lot of play out of him recently. Why yeah. is that? You know, 
he is incredible. And he, I think it's still he is a top three jungler. He has insane movement. He has you know a slow. He has a teleport, and he has the most disrupting ult in the game. Okay. I mean, you put that thing in a team fight. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you have in your in your inventory. You will your team will get scattered. And if you put that in a good intersection during a fire giant or a gold fury, you're gonna win the fight. Yeah, well, taking a look here as the final ban is going to be ready to get through here. That is going to be Agni. Down smart. he goes. Get him out of there. It's smart because in case they do give Nua away, Agni is likely Stealth's next best god. So taking him off the table uh, with Kukulkan being banned is really strong. Counter ban as well. We're going to see Jean Kuei taken off the table, uh, likely out of the hands of uh, Devios there. I mean, it's likely they would have given the more tanky one. Hmm. Well... This is going to be a little bit precarious. So what do you think? Who do you think is left to grab, right? I mean, we have Ra, who is well, most likely going to go into the solo. They so need they need support. a support, and they need a mid. Um, yeah, Maybe. I mean, Ra can mid. He it can depends. Mid. He oh, can actually, um, I think they are going to send Ra mid. Uh, generally speaking, Devios loves tanky solo laners. In fact, we're going to see Chalk. Uh, and given the fact that there's already a Hun bots, now this could still be support. It could still be support. He's definitely a great support. Huge AoE silence uh, not on top of the fact that he still does very, very decent damage. And that move, Storm Call, is an interesting move. Kind of similar to me, like Intoxicate, whereas okay. you get hit by it and you think, I don't need to beat this. Yeah, I, I don't need to beat this. I'll be fine and then you're dead. Hmm. You it does Chuck answer that call though of support? Is it like okay he can actually do this? Well, he did it for a long time before the the great warrior nerf of 2014, where all the warriors just got absolutely destroyed. But he's still I think tanky enough to get that role done. They do have final option here. Athena still on the table. Some Wukong available as well. Uh, two extremely strong supports over on the left side. The return of Vamana, uh, all the while yep. going to be going to the solo lane and. Omega on this character, it's, this is the ZB's. North American Game Hunter, the North American Zalia. I mean, this is going to be devastating. I mean, Vimana, we saw a little bit of play today. He did not actually fare too well. No. Sayo didn't have the best time with him, but this is a completely different player in Omega. I'm very, very interested to see how this matchup comes. Now it's all up to the final pick here, yeah, which is going to be of Cogred going into this. This could and be support. This could be solo. A few it seconds could be support. Left. Ooh. Oh, it's coming. <gasps> yes. He's so excited. Yes. I love Bacchus, man. I love Bacchus. And, you know, they did have the option of grabbing Athena, but you know what? Why? Screw Athena. <laughs> Give me my Bacchus, man. You know, I, I agree. I think Athena, the global ultimate, is amazing. But if you can negate it, her team fight presence just isn't the same. Bacchus you know has a stun. He has healing reduction. He has a knock-up. And Intoxicate is likely the most one of the most disruptive moves in it's the history true. of video games. But you know what's also ha funny is when people have Athena, it seems like they try to commit so much on the global oh, yeah, presence. Yeah. They're like, oh, my solo link got hit once. I'm going. Yeah, right? Exactly. And it's like, oh, by the way, I have fun. Mr. You know, Hunter, a lot by yourself. A lot of people, we're, we're seeing maybe a, maybe a deviation from that where they'll rotate to the solo, force a rotation, yeah. and then ult back to the gold fury. I mean, things like that are, are strong, but Bacchus's presence in team fight is incredible. It's and it's likely that Belly Flop is the best steal ability in the game because, oh. you know, you have your support. He doesn't see it coming over a wall, gets flopped up, hand of the gods, easy peasy. You know, maybe he dies for it, but hey, 1,500 gold. Yep, that's <laughs> true. So, I mean, just with that said alone, I mean, when you have a Bacchus, you have to increase your ward coverage just right. because of that. You have right. to increase it around the objectives, which changes a lot. There's going to be a lot more gold spent. But looking at it here, it looks like Hunbots is going to be going into the jungle here. And on the other side, Osiris. Yeah, and you know, this is a character we've seen a lot in the solo lane. Uh, we've seen him play support a little bit. He has kind of fallen away as a jungler, whereas he was 100% ban rate, mm -hmm. uh, except for one game, which he dominated and was never allowed to play in again. He got a little bit nerfed, and then people started to make maybe not love him as much. Uh, it was a small nerf to his kit, and then, of course, the uh, the chin size destruction, 400 gold added to the price, uh, hurt him a lot. Specifically, him and Kali both took a big uh, swing. I, I have a question for you, which is, you know, last the, the past couple of nights that I've been playing, I've been playing with, like, Dry Bear and some other people, and we've ran into... <laughs> yeah, take that, Rory. Average. I'm kidding. I love you like a sister. Um, but Kabraken is, like, completely, like, overpowered right now. Yeah. And he's not banned out, and I've yet to see that in the SPL. You know, I, I, always, I always talk about this, and, you know, the, I'm, I'm going to get blasted for it, but pro players are lazy. 
Yeah. I mean, it's the same reason that Scylla's not in this game right now. I mean, she's incredible. She has some of the highest damage in the game. She's impossible to control, and yet she's she's never played. Um, but and you know, actually, I would love to see Stealth play that character. He's amazing. Who's Scylla? To be fair, Stealth also probably has an amazing Nua. We don't get to see it too often, but MLC Stealth is going to be going to the uh, mid lane with Nua. Omega going to be taking that baby to the solo lane. 3.3 KDA in the pocket as well. Uh, Andy going jungle with Osiris. Barracuda, of course, uh, famed hunter player. Going to take Rama to the duo lane with his man, Jeff Hinla, <laughs> the great Canadian Geb. I knew you were going to. I was going to say, is that the Canadian? It's the Canadian I Geb. I still got to pick up on that joke. It's not a joke. What are you talking about? Okay, whatever. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> on <laughs> Well, on the other side, Cog, Red, Devios in the solo lane, the boosh. Wait. What? Can we all just take a minute? And Are you going to look at the KD it's again? 9.9. .9. How is that even you know, possible? You know what's even crazier that's, is Yannick is 7.9. That, that is an Ogre 2 KDA. Ooh. Yes. Oh, Ooh. how dare you? Yes. How dare you? Dare you feeling, bring that into this? Feeling myself on that. Oh joke. my God! Well, Ionic <laughs> with the seven point nine. I guess that I makes him Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course Gar's going yeah. to the jungle. Um, he's got great hair. He, I'll dude, give it he has, to him. He's just so pretty. Yeah, right. He's, he's a pretty he dude. Could, he could be in a boy band for <laughs> sure. That's Cog Red. They're a boy band. Yeah. Yeah. He's the lead. I could see it. I could see <laughs> it. Uh, well, as we go ahead and get into this, who are you going to favor the? Early lane game here. Early game, it, it can be difficult. Uh, you know, yeah. Belly Flop is incredible. It's one of the best level one abilities yeah, in the is. game. Uh, Dagars, if he can get the crit off from the 30%, has a lot more damage to pretty much anyone else in the field. But Andy could be going into Heavy Hammer here, uh, which could cause a massive amount of disruption. Though, if he does that, he'll lose that on Bumbas. It looks like we're just going to be getting to Bumbas. Um, and Chalk, man, there's no way that they're going to be able to do enough damage to Chalk. So he'll be able to stand in the front line, peel that out. I don't recommend really either team going in for the kill here because it comes down to luck. Does Humbats get the crit? Yes, they get a kill. Does he not get the crit? They're probably going to lose. Yeah, and, you know, Last game, we really saw that Chaos Side was able to be defeated because of an early game invade. Right. Cog actually choosing to not do that here. They want to just fight it, even Steven. And Omega actually building a Smithy's Hammer. Yeah, we have actually two of them. Yeah, We're well, what's one going on, on with that? As well. I mean, well, it's 250 health and 25 damage for a very small amount of... Uh, gold. I mean, they were also able to build uh, Hand of the Gods and healing and mana. You know, it's I think it's a uh, ten fifty, maybe a thousand, something like that. It's it's very very cheap, or rather uh, physical protection. This is going to ensure that they can dive into the creeps, take a little bit of extra damage. They're getting that extra health off, and since they're both physical damage dealers, they know they'll be able to withstand each other. On top of the fact that both junglers are also physical. Huh. So they they just want well although, okay here we go although Vamana does have a small advantage here uh, given the fact that his passive is giving him fifteen percent of that protection back in damage a very small advantage very very small here as everyone's just really trying to clean this up here everything completely standard yeah. nothing crazy coming off the break like we had the last game which was so exciting but we found that that early game lead did not transfer to a W for fat chunks. We will see what happens. Well, these two, these are scrim partners. I mean, these guys are consistently scrimming each other. I mean, th most of the time, they're only scrimming each other. So they know a lot of their strategies. I don't think either team wanted to get too sneaky. They didn't have anything to really bring out there, so they're just going for their basic stuff. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't one of these teams formed to be practiced for the other one? Not so much. They were sponsored to be practiced. Okay. Uh, the Game Changers, formerly, uh, who are now Cog Red, they were picked up by Cog as, you know, scrim partner, sister team. Cog wanted another team as well. Ooh, nice jump in from Ionic, helping clear the wave there, get some damage off and force Barracuda back. Ionic's actually going to the back line here to split the small camp, or rather, I'm sorry, Hinla, uh, with MLC Stealth to give both a little bit of a boost in experience. It's likely Stealth will lose a little bit of gold to the tower here, uh, but overall, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big win in experience. Yeah, and you know, God, Ionic taking a lot of damage here. Meanwhile, over into the solo lane, Omega 
and Andy still doing a good job here, just really dodging all of the damage. You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, casters, the production team, how we do this is we'll be talking about one thing, and then we generally want to look at the minimap to see if there's something going on. And all three of us were looking at something <laughs> else, and we saw a grouping like, oh, my God, someone's going to die. And we go right? over, and they're yeah, just yeah. looking at each other. Like, yeah. oh, it's physical protection. Well, things okay. got close. <laughs> they, yeah. they walked near each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, clear-wise, Omega has a little bit of an advantage here over Devios, correct? In this lane, like he should be able to push his wave every single time and really keep Devios at his. Well, they both power. have two moves that can do a decent amount of damage. Omega can do his a little bit more safely, um, and Devios can do his for less mana because of his clear casting uh, from his passive overflow. Um, honestly, it's or rather, yes, overflow. Um, it's hard to say which one's going to have the advantage early. I mean, both have pretty decent clear. Both have hand of the gods. Uh, right there, it looks like it's going to go to Omega. He was a little bit quicker on the draw, and Devios is going to take some damage here. Yep, Devios just getting a little bit of damage here. Nothing crazy as there is going to be some. It might force him back here, but he is going to actually go for a little bit of a turnaround here and chase this baby back to his tower. I like the healing coming out. Devios using that healing effectively, getting the slow, making sure Omega is staying at bay. But look at this positioning. The pressure coming out from Omega, allowing him to perfectly get off that umbrella rank. Here comes the armored umbrella as well, doing decent damage. The back on will be cleared for Omega, whereas Devios just pushing forward. Nothing going on the left side. Both teams staying very, very safely, and no one level 5 just yet either. Yeah, and you know, Devious already shredded through his pots. I mean, he's all gone with those, so we should be seeing him back Omega very, very well. soon. Omega yeah, oh, well. and Omega, look at that. I, I didn't even see that. I think they're both trying to just get the upper hand. Now, Stormcall, he can react to the Stormcall if he wants uh, by going into Colossal Fury uh, and then trying to chase him down. I don't think either player really has enough damage to kill the other. They're kind of waiting for the junglers, which are nowhere to be found because at the three-minute mark, we're going to fight over mid-camps. Yeah, and, you know, Andy actually getting an early beat here. Ooh. He is able to spot one. That's going to be Garth. He has some damage there. Isn't going to be able to clean this up here, but this is going to be a big battle here for these mid-harpies. Our mid-harpies do go down to Jeff Hinla. Snoopy comes in the back line. And <laughs> Andy has gone for man grouping. Coming out from the guys on red. They're chasing down Jeff Hinla. Super slow right now. The rollout's going to be stopped. Nuwak goes into the air, but the damage. I'm very surprised they backed off, but it's lucky they did. Oh, God. Snoopy almost go just gone completely down there from Bear's snipes. Yeah, and, you know, Barracuda isn't able to convert any of those into kills. Same with Nua, which, you know, they, looking at, you know, Prime does have two gods who can really get up into the air and take themselves out and be yep. untargetable, which is probably going to come into a huge deal later on in the game. I don't think anybody really expected Anderson to go down there. Right. I mean, e even as it was happening, the, the amount of damage that he took at the same time was incredible. I mean, that was some World of Warcraft level, like PVE level strategy. I mean, just everything I've hit him at PBE the same time. I've heard PVE so many times out of you in the past, like, two days. I, I really, I don't want to play WoW. My girlfriend <laughs> will leave me. <laughs> you know, it's funny We're because talk when it, that though. game was around, it was, it was like, you know, it was like 2006, 2007. I was a pro player uh, in Halo, and I was like, dude, the last thing I want to do is play this game because I know my <laughs> career is just gone. It's, it's one of those games that just suck your soul out. Oh, ab I mean, absolutely. And then she She'll, she'll leave me, I'm telling you. <laughs> she will actually walk out. Uh, bottom side, blue buff going to be taken here. They'll split it, uh, of course, with Omega to use that Bumba's mask. Uh, he'll, he's going to need this. I mean, Vamana's biggest weakness, I think, is mana consumption. He, this skin is actually called Little Mana. That is not a play on words. He just runs out of that stuff so quickly. Yeah, and, you know, he actually did walk over a word here. And that's very interesting that Omega... He actually did not return to the lane with any kind of wards at all, which is a little bit ballsy. But, I mean, at the five-minute mark, I don't think he's worried too, too much about anything coming out of the jungle just yet. Snoopy actually managing to hold off both Barra and Jeff Hinla by himself. Uh, level 7 right now as we see a rotation from Ionic. Blue buff finally going to get picked up on top side. Uh, the last of the four-minute buffs to be picked up. The red buff on the bottom side was a little bit late, uh, as was red buff on top. So they're probably going to be picking those up in a little bit. In the meantime, Andy's in a very precarious position. Position. Oh my god, he got out of that. <laughs> Yeah, how? Wait. Wait. I have no idea. Oh god, he's actually going to get chased. Buff. He's going to get chased. That's a speed buff. Overhand smash. Sacred Monkey. Nice shield. shield coming out from Jeff Hinla. Ionic nowhere in tow. Gar's trying to do some damage and a great rotation from Boosh. Double Cataclysm. Oh Here comes my Gar's god. Gar's taking too much damage. Snoopy finds a kill as well as Nuwa takes to the skies. He's taken to the skies as well. We're going to see some snipes coming out. Snoopy takes two. Oh. Snoopy <laughs> takes three. Jeff Hinla gets in there. Doesn't get 
his, his opportunity. I think Snoopy's going to escape. Yep, and Yannick was able to just disrupt Jeff Hinla Jeez. as well. And in comes some more damage from Barracuda. Will he be able to get this kill? Hits him once. In comes a little bit more push from Stealth. Stealth chasing this. He Look does have to be up. a little bit careful. Oh, misses. Missed. Oh, no. He missed. Oh, no. Oh, Ionic's going to get out safely, and he's probably counting his lucky stars <laughs> that MLC for the first time in his entire life misses a skill shot. Boosh rotates over finally very late to the fight. Left, camp mid uh, left camps are going to go down to Jeff Hinlow. Right camp's coming up in a second here, and it looks like Andy's ready to go. Oh, man, that is just absolutely heartbreaking here. Jeff Hinlow's back is going to be disrupted here by Gars. Isn't able to be taken out, but regardless, that is still rather annoying here as now Gars is going to be caught here by Stealth and Andy. Will he go down, though, is the question. Ooh, the Root doing a lot of damage, getting very <gasps> low, doesn't quite find it. Rahil uh, going to keep him up, bring him just... back to the point of uh, no, almost no return. Uh, Gars will even rotate top and get a little bit greedy for himself, uh, grabbing a red buff. Yeah, I... That's the second time someone's just gotten away with just a little bit of health. That's always the worst and most frustrating. Uh. Yeah, so, uh, you mean, Snoopy in the last fight was able to do such a great job getting those snipes off. Yep. He didn't quite find the kill there. Uh, speaking of Snoopy, as he appears right there, 510 average goal per minute, 75% win. Uh, as well as a 4 KDA, actually topping Barracuda. Uh, now, when we talk about the launch tournament and the qualifiers, that name, I, I, if, if it was a drinking game, we'd all be dead. What? Barracuda was the most talked about player probably in the history of Smite. The guy really? came on the scene out of nowhere. He was easily the best player in the world for months and months and months. And with a 490 huh. GPM, 71% 70 win-loss against only pro teams and a 3.6 KDA has proven that he's been able to keep his medal rocking all the way through these past couple months. Man. I I, had, I would have never guessed. He because Barracuda's just, you know, coming in, he, he's just so good. For a long time, it, it, it almost felt like the team was on his back. And then, you know, Dare to Care was still amazing as well. Their team synergy was great, of course, now replaced by Jeff Hinla. MLC Stealth really found his footing with his, uh, this team. Omega became incredible. And then out of nowhere, Andenster, who actually came into the Smite Fantasy League as the most expensive player at 1380, uh, has just been an amazing, amazing force for this team. And I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that they've been practicing a lot with Cog Red. Both teams have grown a significant amount by practicing with each other. Yep, well, Omega does have to be careful here as we're seeing a lot of grouping here from Cog Red. Isn't going to turn into anything. Andy doing an excellent job in the last couple of lives to pick up some wards and throw them into the jungle so Vimana is able to have a little bit of cover there. He's just saying, you know, I really don't need this money as much as you do. You get all big, baby. You know, you know what I love too is you can see how much the teams play together. I mean, they're warding the hot spots at the same exact time. Uh, oh, over that is on true. the left side, there it's are funny. two on top of each other. There's two at Gold Fury, uh, two at Hot Spot right above the mid camp. I mean, that's just beautiful. I mean, you gotta love that kind of play. It's just they're so similar in so many ways. Now, talking about a boxing match here between really Barracuda and Snoopy, who takes that? Is it Rom or is it Apollo? It, it really depends on how well he can use the Serenade, uh, how many Astral Strikes are going off, if he can use the wider hitbox more effectively, uh, how the protections go. It, it really is a, is a coin flip. And between two players who are incredible at hitting skill shots, it, it, it really comes down to maybe Rama's ult might be a little bit more effective in the oh. end. It's, it's hard to say. Look at this grouping here. All for the mid. Harpies. Andy's going to be a little bit late to the party. Chuck's going to come in, a.k.a. Devios, make his presence known. Baby comes a little bit late on the rotation. Mid Harpies going to Cog Red. That was a really good push there. Andy tried to find the opportunity to go for the steal. Didn't quite get it. Took a little bit of damage yeah. in the meantime. Uh, looking at him right now, he's actually level 10, despite the fact that he uh, was picked off two times now across the way. Gars also level 10. Actually, 50 gold behind despite having one less death. Very, very interesting. Now, taking a look at the actives here, nothing too crazy. Right. Uh, we are we are seeing the sprint coming out of the boosh. We do see blink coming out from Geb. Usually it's a toss-up. Sometimes you want the blink, sometimes you want the shell. Uh, in certain situations, weakening curse is acceptable as well, but he has opted into the blink. And that's actually exactly, I think, what Ionic is going to be building here. He's got the creeping curse there. I'm assuming yep. that will be what he builds that into. I mean, he could go for the weakening curse, and he likely will, considering Omega uh, will be nigh on un unstoppable 
if they don't shut down that healing. Once he's in Colossal Fury, I mean, especially with the amount of defense that he built uh, with Runeforge Hammer, it's going to be very, whoa, very whoa, difficult whoa, whoa, to control. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 what is this? What? Is this is this a heavy hammer coming out at 11 minutes for Andy? Yeah, I mean, I would have preferred this be a little bit earlier. I mean, kind of utilize it a little bit better. Uh, but it does come out. I mean, on Osiris, this is a super strong item. Remember, the there's a four-hit combo that he does, a four-hit attack chain okay. that Osiris has. And the third and fourth hits are AoE. They're, they're a cone in front of him, so he technically now has AoE slows as his auto attacks, and that's huge. Would you say Osiris should have started off with the heavy hammer because of that, or is he is his jungle clear not good well, enough? Well, even, even when Bumba's uh, wasn't the strongest item, and you know we saw a lot of play coming out from Death Toll and Bam Shroud, uh, Andy was still building Bumba's most of the time because he loves the idea of splitting gold with his teammates. There's, I mean, we saw the coordination in the beginning. He split the camps so effectively, getting red in speed almost at the exact same time uh, with stealth to give him a huge boost, and that's a massive amount of gold. Yeah. Taking a look here at Omega vs. Devios. I mean, this is just, this is like two big drunk guys just like <laughs> slugging at one another. Neither one of them really showing any sign of weakness. Yeah. Yeah. And, and identical they have belts. the same build. <laughs> I, I love it. Jake. Actually, Omega is a little bit ahead. He has boots too. Oof. <laughs> Hold the phone. That extra 10 damage and six, uh, 3% attack speed. Yeah. Ooh, actually not stopping the back. Devios actually allows him to go back. Devios here probably shouldn't back. He should wait for the next wave. Uh, he shouldn't get too greedy, though. This might be Omega's opportunity to look for something. Omega just needs to clear... Rather, Devios needs to clear this wave, get back, and spend that money ASAP. In the bank right now, he does have 1600 He needs 1850 to finish the boost. Yeah, and, you know, this is actually the first time I've watched Gars play someone other than Thor in, like, the past week. So, finally, at least one team catches on to it. Hinla spotting Neonic, just basically giving him a little lump tap, saying, Yeah, I see you, buddy. How's it going? Well, and well, I mean, it's a rotation here for the mid-harpies, which is going to go to Cog Red as it stands right now. Again, they yeah, are controlling it so well. Time. They've taken that, I think, every single time. It's been great pressure. Uh, nice shot coming out from Hinla, forcing Yannick to take some damage as he walks into the lane. Three people grouped up here for Cog. Uh, I'm not sure what they're looking for. They're rotating towards the left side. I just saw a ping for the goal. Fury, they're gonna they're gonna go for it. But Ionic's gonna spot it immediately. They walked over a sentry for that one. They have to be careful. They have no ward coverage at all. Uh, to really paint that picture as to if they would come from the pathing from mid into the gold fury there. And yeah, they actually don't at all. I wasn't sure if like, you know, one of the icons were blocking it, but yeah, they had no vision. That is a very, very gutsy call. Devios took a lot of damage there, but he does get out. He finishes the boots. Uh, he has uh, about 200 gold left over, which it looks like he has not spent. So no potions, no extra wards. He has the one uh, just kind of hanging out. Gars rotates over to be able to hold the lane, clears the wave very quickly. Devios will be able to rotate back down and now has a lot more damage uh, than Vimana, considering he gained 20 extra damage with the boots uh, over Omega's only 10. Uh, so that's a 20 damage difference between them, not to mention there's 15 penetration as well. Yep, and Omega actually going back to the house, he was able to get that blue buff. Oh, so oops. are we going to, is that going to put, you know, Omega in a little bit of a head just because he has that blue buff? And I mean, obviously the builds are the exact same. Well, no, Devios just picked this up as well. Oh, so they are the exact same. Yep, and actually it looks like Vimana's going to miss uh, one creep in experience, two, three creeps in gold. Uh, won't miss much more. You see him trying to clear up. Actually forces two tower shots. Oh, wow. Devios there. Devios answers back with a quick uh, teleport torrent combo doing some damage, but that went to the better of Omega. And you know, it's so funny. Creepy. Yeah, it's so funny looking at the minimap because, like, no jungler wants a piece of that. They're like, you Neither know what? of them will wind up getting a kill. I yeah, mean, no, they're the just overextension like, would have to be massive. The, the timing would have to be perfect. They'd already have to be half health. And at this point, Devios is healing for weight. I mean, look at the healing. He just took that armored umbrella to the face. He's going to take the umbrella rang. It looks like one shot and answer back. Omega again takes the brunt of the damage. Yep. And, you know. We're, we're seeing Cog Prime just really try to start toying with the Gold Fury just a little bit. They're like, come up, hit it once, trying to bait it, trying to bait Cog Red out to really catch him off guard. But Cog Red's not falling for it at all. This has been a very, very slow game you thus know, it, far. It feels to me like th these, this is the Kung Fu mastery right now. Yeah. Where it's like normally, you, you know, when you talk about Kung Fu, you think about kicks and punches and people dying, right? But true Kung Fu is about like baiting, karate kid. Yeah, <laughs> baiting your opponent, tree. waiting for a mistake more okay. than you're trying to create an opportunity. And in this case, three kills in 15 and a half minutes, I think really paints the picture to how well these teams know each other and what situations they're able to go in. In fact, uh, you know, going back to the Aninster death for first blood, it was instantaneous death. 
they attacked him with four abilities at the exact same time because that was the only way they knew they were going to get Andy down. Yep, and that is going to be the Warlock Sash coming out of uh, stealth there. So he's going to be able to get some stacks going up there just a little bit. About right on time there for him. And on the other side, the Boosh with the exact same thing. The only thing separating these two characters is just the tiny trinket at this point. It, it's, right. it's so crazy how evenly matched they are. But instead of that tiny trinket, he has improved sprint, which makes him immune to slows, though admittedly not going to help him too much against stealth, considering stealth has a stun and a root. Ah. Oh, tower. Oh, oh by the way, weakening curse is up on Ionic as well. So the tower is going to be here. Jeff Hinla and the other guys, though, are really trying to engage this here just a little bit. They're trying to start this fight. Ionic comes in, and there comes the Gold Fury fight. The minions actually switched on over to the Gold Fury. She tried to swing at them with the metal uh, to get the range stun, but it did not find anyone. We're seeing a rotation over to the mid lane here. The first tower of the game does go down. Devios uh, very adamant about continuing to push that lane. <laughs> Rotate towards the, st uh, actually the top small camp. This is uh, curious, considering the grouping's going on, but he's going to go right for it. Yeah, and that's... That's very, very interesting. I mean, Cog Red, you know, it's a slow and steady victory for them, right? Like, they've done such a good job at controlling the mid harpies, which right. obviously we know gives you so much experience. And then on the other side, they've denied every kind of push or attempt of even trying to start a fight at Gold Fury. They're denying any kind of grouped fight right now. You know, a, a quick tip for everyone at home. If you're ever in a ranked game or you're in a regular game and you think they've done Gold Fury and you don't have your ward coverage, check the chart. Hit your T button, open up that chart, and, you know, really see if there's a big dip. Now, I just ch checked my tar uh, ch uh, ch uh, chart here, and at 17 minutes, that dip to me looked like it should have been a Gold Fury. But there has been such a small amount of gold game between these two teams. That was actually only a 500 gold tower. All right. All right. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick your brain here. Okay. All right. The snoop -a loop just bought the Odysseus bow. Ooh, the oboe on the The oboe. What should we expect to see out of him out of the next engagement? And, you know, yeah, he's going, I guess, just for basic auto attacks. He's looking to get that chain lightning off as much as possible. With that, um, there's, there's an issue here because to really make that effective, you need more attack speed. The more attack speed, the more chances you're going to get to land an attack, the more chances you're going to get to hit that 25% and get that chain lightning off. The issue here is that Apollo's uh, passive audacity is going to give him 100% attack speed every 10 auto attacks, meaning he's going to wind up overcapping himself if he builds into any more attack speed, which means Executioner and Shin Size are, are, are now a pipe dream. The rest is going to be crit damage. Expect the Rage, expect the Deathbringer, and really he's going to be looking. Remember, it's 30 damage plus 50% of your physical power, so he wants as much damage as possible, and he's getting a lot from Death's Gloves. He'll get a lot from Deathbringer. He has 30 from Tabby. He is 15 right now from Death's Toll. So he's looking for big damage swings. Just looking for the grouping at the Gold Fury, grouping at the Fire Giant, looking to lay, just lay waste. So he's going to be hitting like a truck in layman's terms. Once he gets the Deathbringer <laughs> for right now, he's going to be a little bit behind comparatively uh, to where Barracuda is, who has opted into Executioner, which gives him 30 damage out the gate with 25 attack speed plus some pen. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, Omega and Devios kind of enter into these team fights because right. everyone's going to be like, oh my god, why are you so tanky and how are you hitting me like a truck, right? Like, I mean, Omega, he's going to do so much damage as Vamana. Well, like, it's were, insane. You were talking about the Oboe. You know, you're yeah. pretty excited. I'm kind of curious here to see Gars going into Smithy's Hammer on Hunbot. Now, this is, again, as we've seen, probably going to be the Reforge Hammer here. Yeah. Extra protections, extra health, uh, going to pay some dividend back, of course, uh, into that damage. But honestly, it's it's curious to see someone like Hunbot pick an item uh, like this. It looks to me like they're going to try to be maybe a little bit more defensive. Uh, look for play opportunities in terms of disruption, do some damage, jump away, and try to just come back into the fight yep. afterwards, keeping himself at a high enough HP mark so we're, when he comes back in, he's not you know on his lifeline. Hmm. You know, looking at it too, you know, looking just basically completely at the actives here, we're seeing a couple level right. three builds here out of Cog Red. On the other side, only Hog 3. Oh, Sprint. We got a sprint there from Omega as well. Oh, and a, and a sprint. Which is very important because okay. greater sprint can be activated in Colossal Fury, oh. meaning he doesn't slow down when he gets the auto attacks. Huge amount of damage. Interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have no idea what's happening with this break, so we're going to hop to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have the game. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The pause is done. The fight just about to begin. The pauses. That was the lot of Cog Red's pauses uh, hot off the back of the DC. Um, and we're going to be 
hitting a little bit of stasis mode here. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. I just want to cast Dude, listen, it's not going to happen. We're just hanging out, right? We got the gold Bacchus just throwing his tits around. <laughs> you know, it is so, what it is. I mean, it was a really long pause. The boosh was actually disconnected. So it was actually a viable pause. Right, like, yeah, I mean, they no, definitely that's... needed to do it. But they did get him back online. I oh, was having an issue with the spectator client. But uh, looking at the board here, two members of Cog Red are still fighting for that gold fury. Bottom side, Gars is trying to push out Jeff Hinla, keep him in combat. Remember, uh, with regular blink, you must be out of combat for five seconds before it can be used. Uh, so as long as Gars can keep him controlled, he won't be able to run past so easily. Gars could, of course, jump back in. But looking at the map here, I don't really see the opportunity for them to go for this. I think this might be a little bit too dangerous. Yeah, it, it's going to be very, very difficult, but we have everything caught up to speed here. Gar is now really trying to keep him at bay. Meanwhile, this Gold Fury is just getting ticked away. Wow. Here comes Andy, and they're wow. able to secure this Gold Fury, and now they're looking to make a push, but in comes some snipes. In comes Bacchus. Now, a lot of damage coming there, but unfortunately, they sent it out to Humbots, who did build physical protection. Uh, Beam not doing enough. Jeff Hinla completely caught out here, trying to be safe. Bear is going to be forced to beads. Jeff, super low, will be caught out, actually, uh, by some rogue damage there. Uh, Nuwa hitting all five with the ultimate. His stealth uh -oh. trying to wiggle his way out. Yep, Barracuda coming in to do a little bit of damage. Oh, in comes Omega. the big baby, the Boosh, able to get one kill. Vamana just really trying to do any bit of damage that he can. In comes Andy, really trying to stay alive here. 1v1 versus the Boosh. Will he be able to do it? He's so low. Omega able to get that kill finally. And now it is going to be Omega. Will he push for Devios? No, he won't because they've been battling for 20 minutes and neither of them have been below half health. You know, a 3 for 2 right there. Unfortunately for Cog Prime, plus they lost the Gold Fury. Cog Red now up yeah. to 3,000. In gold, and they're going to start to feel that because Boosh has 2,600 gold in hand. That is a huge amount of trouble. He yeah, could build be a lot of. He, this could just flat out be a Chronos pendant. Yeah, it, it could be. And on the other side, why did Gars decide Ooh, to just really stop on Smithy's hammer and go straight into the shorts? Oh, it's one of the most cost-effective items in the game. Super yep. low cost, gives you a ton of stats. I think it's very smart. Um, bottom side, it looks like we're going to see Boosh going into that soul trap. Likely going to be Book of Thoth. He's going to go for double stacking and try to get his damage up to a pretty significant, almost critical level. And, and seeing since this game, you know, has been kind of slow up until this point, you know, talk to me about the double stacking. Explain why it's like so important. Well, I mean, Ra has such good wave clear, and he's so safe that it's very hard for a team to kind of combat that. Uh, what that's going to allow him to do is sit back, get that extra damage, and as they get towards that 30 or 35 minute mark, he's going to have so much damage in the pocket that he'll be able to kite around. Now, given the fact that he has speed of light, which is going to increase his movement speed, he has a massive stacking slow in divine light, on top of the fact that he can heal himself and do a sick amount of damage by throwing beams out, Kiting is a huge, huge effective strategy, and that's going to allow Ra to run in circles in team fights, keep himself alive with Warlock Sash, and do a ton of damage with the double stack. Yep, Yannick gonna help, go ahead and jump in there. He's gonna get disrupted there by Jeff Henla. He says, "Get back out of here!" And it looks like Yannick that's my actually point, though. That's yeah. my point. There was five people right there for Cog Prime, and they went on Yannick and thought, "There's Ra. We're not gonna get anything here. Let's that's just." True. Let's just leave it alone. Now, it looks like Yannick's actually going to be building that Witch Blade here out of the Curse Blade. That... Yeah. Do you like it? Yes, uh, I absolutely love it. Increasing Bacchus's movement speed to get him to the deeper parts of the fight to maybe get off uh, an extra person in the Intoxicate or to close the distance to get that belly flop that he's looking for. I mean, that could be huge. On top of the fact that he's going to reduce the damage of Barracuda, Omega, and Andy. Yep, and Snoopy's still holding on to... Beads level one here. Meanwhile, Barracuda hanging out, just really still at Beads level one, basically mirror imaging there in the active department. But, you know, taking a look here, <laughs> Prime has really just, they haven't secured any objectives. They've done okay in their own jungle. They haven't really pressured any of the towers besides the tier one in the duo lane, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, and that really doesn't hurt them all that much. That just means Snoopy now has more of an ability to rotate around using that global ultimate. He's not as pressured to stick around in the lane, although mid tower just take a lot. Jeff Himla could be in some trouble here. Nice shield cataclysm. Only going to hit the support there. They're using a lot <laughs> on Tuionic. Four men wow. on the Intoxicate the Dream as we're going to see him go up, trying to do some damage. Snoopy's going to try to 
get in here as well. You see him rotating. He's, he's kind of biding his time looking for the kill on Barra, but Barra does dive out oh. perfectly, and somehow nobody he was died. able to do it again? The issue here, though, is while nobody died, Cog Prime took a lot of damage, and Cog Red has the rock. Ooh. Omega getting very, very ballsy there. Luckily, the mobility of Omega able to get out of there. Vamana, an amazing character with a great kit. Finally starting to see a lot more play here in the SPL, but I don't think this is looking good for Cog Prime. This tower should be taken as well. Uh, they're they're going to trade off. Actually, they're going to back up. Barracuda's back full health. Snoopy's going to be forced away. Just barely saving that tower at about 25% health. Maybe actually even a little bit less. Uh, they have the opportunity to keep that around, and they're going to need to. They're already 3,400 gold in the hole. Adding 1,500 to that will definitely hurt. Well, I love the fact that Cog Red, only one guy decided to back. I mean, Boosh threw down his heel, and now we're finally seeing Snoopy, but they know this Gold Fury is getting ready to come up. So they decide, okay, some of you guys can go back, buy some items. We're going to contest this Gold Fury, make sure that Cog Prime cannot crawl back into this one. And it looks like Devios, I mean, <laughs> as much damage as he's assumed, like, I don't think I've seen him below half. You know, I'm looking at the builds here. I see tankiness coming out from Gars. I see a ton of tankiness coming out from Ionic. I see a ton of tankiness coming out from Devios. And I see a decent amount of tankiness and movement speed coming out from Ra. This is a very difficult team to kill. They need a Warlock Sash ASAP. They gotta shut down the Ra sustain. Yeah, it, it, and a Warlock Sash is gonna do all of that for right. them. So now, uh, Gold Fury getting very low, not quite dead just yet. Actually, Cog Red does manage to get that right before Jeff gets in. He gets a two-man Kata. Lord of the Afterluck to the background as they begin their chase, but Himla goes down. Ionic is still alive here, trying to get sniped out. Oh. Hits a two-man <laughs> belly flop. Stealth will find the kill, but Jeff gets traded as well. Andy will go down to Devios as Snoopy begins his aggression. Back onto Barracuda. Devios is in there. Bear is going to go down unless Stealth finds a miracle. Stealth is going to be here. So is going to be Omega. Mega, Ooh, are they going to go for this? Stealth really just trying to feel this out. Snoopy all the way in the back. Stealth just wants the easy one. Omega is going to get stunned. In comes Snoopy. Snoopy able to stay alive. Finally, he's going to be cleaned up. Now it's going to be a two on two. And Omega is going to be able to get that. Can they take out Devious? No, and he wants to. No now we're back to this. I know, right? What is with that? I'm so <laughs> tired of it. It's just, it's like, it's like, can one of you just like giant attempt to die? Amazing hype team fight. And then we're just back to baby yeah. versus giant. Oh, and uh, by the way. <laughs> this is a <laughs> this is a rewind of 15 minutes ago. Oh, I mean, God. but that's that's the tankiness I'm talking about. I mean, Devios has Runeforge Hammer uh, being augmented by Heart of the Urchin. Omegatron also has. They're actually building basically the same thing. <laughs> they have the same exact build. It's actually yep, the super height of the cute. urchin it, it coming in and everything. I mean, the, it's the only difference between these builds is that Devios opted into Boots One before he started the Heartseeker, so the item are switched. Yeah. But otherwise, I mean, for that regard, they have the same exact build. Well, talk to me a little it's bit crazy. about what Henla's doing here with his fourth purchase here, which is going to be this Pestilence. Okay, so they're they're looking for healing reduction here, Okay, uh, which is going to be good. I mean, the sustainability coming out from Ra has been massive. That's the only reason Ionic was able to survive, which subsequently is the only reason he was able to get that du double be uh, belly flop and ensure that Cog Red took the better of that fight. Uh, overall, sure, it was a 4-4, but they did get the Gold Fury. They're still 4,600 ahead right now. I just want to say that Athena could not have done that. That. Just for the record here, Dude, I'm on board, man. Um, you, you don't, you don't gotta preach to me. I, I know. I just, I, I just love Bacchus. You know, that was actually one of my first guardians that I mastered, so I have that emotional connection to him. Because like, no one likes to play guardians, so when you do it, you feel like you know. Really it's funny. That's the opposite. Um, even when I played on a team, I just would not play this character. Even when he was better, I was just so bad at it. Really? I don't drink. Um, I don't get it. Yeah. Well, that's that's your problem. Some of us <laughs> like to escape reality. <laughs> Mid lane, you know, they started to pressure Stealth there for a second, and Stealth's like, no, 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 I have my own friends. I can just make friends. And he yeah. threw minions in and blew the entire wave up. Yeah. The power of Nuwa. But uh, we don't see a lot of uh, minion usage in terms of tower diving, which is strange. They're going to clear up a sentry over at the Fire Giant. They're not going to start it. Uh, maybe look to Omega here, but he is level 20 right now. Uh, amazing amount of sustainability. And he has Heartseeker and Shin Size online with greater sprint. Like, this is not a character you want to go near. Yep, and Jeff Hindler is going to take a little bit of damage here, but nothing crazy. No, actually, I mean, he has a shield. Yeah, he, he has the shield. The baby is going to be coming in from the backside. Just going to be kind of clearing up there. And just like that, Yannick taking a little bit of damage. Yeah, that, that cute stun over the wall coming out uh -huh. from stealth. He's like, yeah, I play this character. DM, chill. By the way, I have a little tomfoolery <laughs> up my sleeve. 
Uh, Barra and Snoopy are just continuing to do their thing. It looks like actually Snoopy is going to back here. Um, what is he going to finish? Does he have enough? No, it looks like he, the, uh -oh. the beads in the sprint right side. It looks like we do have an engagement. Uh, Devio's taking some damage, but I think Jeff actually pulled the... Uh, Pull the fire giant. Oh, man. Uh, Devios, will he oh actually God, get taken out here? He's not. I mean, Omega doing so much damage. Finally, the baby's going to go from Honey Eye Shrunk the kids form again. And now he's just going to be forced back into the fire giant here as Nuwa looking to kind of creep around, throws down a ward, trying to really just clean up here. Oh, double be intoxicate. In. There's the searing pain. Gets blown up. This is going to be a huge turnaround. Uh, Snoopy's rotating in as well as Barracuda trying to make his way in. That's a triple oh! stun. That's a triple stun from MLC. Stealth. He's getting a huge amount of damage as Andy continues his pressure, but he's taking too much. He's going to go down over there uh, just barely as Barracuda is trying to outbox Snoop. Yeah, that's going to be a very, very Ooh. tough one here. Barracuda is able to win it. His ultimate is down, so he won't be able to snipe Ra or Ionic at all. But overall, finally, Cog Prime able to answer the call of Cog Red. That was a hugely amateur stack up right there from the guys on Cog Red. They they all just walked right into each other, and Stealth's like, oh, Christmas, thanks. Oh, Stealth came around. I mean, that's what I was saying. She was coming around the backside, really trying to catch him off guard through, and throughout did. the entire time, and he did. That was that the was most perfect off guard play. you can be. Three people stacked up on top of each other, close enough to be hit by new minions. And that is, Christmas. That is just a little bit of unlucky, a little bit of uh, oh, bad no. situational awareness. Well, we do have Omega and Barracuda getting ready in here. He's trying to get to the boost so hard. In comes the Bowie Flop. Not going to have any kind of engagement here. Just going to kind of hang out in the jungle and say, okay, well, I've made my presence known. Meanwhile, there's just waves to be eaten everywhere. Man, even with the Executioner, by the way, right there, Barra did no damage to, to Ionic. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he's already back at full health. I mean, there's no reason for that to even happen. Barracuda hit him for like 80 on his mm -hmm. second hit. That's after some of the penetration. That's crazy. And the Boosh actually bought Heavenly Agility. I love it. I love it. Increase the healing. That will actually completely negate the effects of uh, Pestilence and then add some uh, for, you know, the duration of a few seconds. Not, nothing crazy. Six now, seconds. Now, Stealth decided to get the Rod. Right. Okay. And now, on the other side, Boosh with Obsidian Shard, and now he's going with another Magic Focus. I like the Obsidian Is, Shard what, What's he going to be going into with that? Though? This could be a Void Stone, uh, specifically because the magic damage has been Crazy. On top of the fact that uh, there, of course, is also the idea of increasing penetration uh, for Ionic, but I mean, that's not as important. I mean, he could go for Spear of the Magus here, but honestly, I, I don't know how I love that considering he doesn't really have a lot of multi hit abilities. Well, they are going to lose amid Harpies yet again. Inconsequential. I can't, yeah, I know. I, I can't tell you the last time I saw actually Cog Prime actually take it, <laughs> though. Take so the it's right like, camp, yeah. I'm like, hmm. I wonder if they'll get this one, and oh, it looks like... Of camps. Oh, yeah, Cog Red stacking up. That's going to be the Gold Fury there. That's a Ooh. big one. That's going to increase their lead to 5,300. Uncontested, too. Yeah, That's I mean, a nightmare. They had no idea that was happening. Well, they did because there's two wards right there, but they were not in I, the I position at all. I kind of the rotation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but even so, I mean, Devios has 1,500 in the pocket right now, and he has, like... The world is his oyster in terms of build. He has died now, so the only person who has not died in this game, Omega, has outlasted Chuck. Three-man oh. two-man shockwave, and she's in the sky. Yep, and in comes Omega. Is going to be doing a lot of damage. Rama's up in the sky as well. Can Omega be able to get this kill on Devios? He's doing so much damage. <laughs> and Devios is just going to slide out the back door. And now in comes Snoopy, throwing down his damage as well. Mesmerize doing just a little bit. Ionic now forced to retreat. He's tanky. He's not that tanky. Again, two-man shockwave, and he's going to miss the sight there. But with Devios dead and one of their hands off the table, this gives a major benefit uh, to the boys right now on Cog Prime, and they're going to turn their sights to the Fire Giant. All eyes are currently on Ionic. Oh, man, this is going to be big. Ionic does have a path in here. He's going to belly flop right over. The Fire Giant is at about halfway. Ooh, they're going to disconnect go. completely from it. The boost taking a lot of damage here. In comes Hinla. Hinla can't do it. Snoopy's able to get one. That's Down big. goes the Boosh. That's a big turnaround right there. Uh, Jeff Hinla's taking some damage here. Overall, they've lost Boosh, but they've also lost Omega. Now, their major front line has taken a big hit. That Chain Lightning paying dividends right there for Barra, allowing them to do a, a pretty much insane amount of damage. I'm sorry, that was Snoopy. He is also with the Oboe. Uh, Gars finds Barra in the back. It looks like Snoopy's trying to chase down as well. He's going to try to work himself back into the fight. But this is basically a 3v3. But Devios just respawned. 
Yeah, and Jeff Hindley got caught chasing oh, really hard there. All up to him. Iana comes in with a big belly flop there. Down he goes. And now it is Hindla. Oh, no. And Stel Stel's in a bad position. Didn't have the shield. So in comes the Cataclysm. This is going well for Jeff. Ooh, Will he be able to do this? Taking so much damage. Actually dives in anyway. He realizes he's on cooldown. Andy jumps back in. Hindla's going to oh, go down. No. And that is going to be a D aside. Cogred somehow brings that one out of their pocket. Hot off the back of one of the worst engagements they could have really put themselves well, into. They got taken by surprise and they turned that around. They got taken by surprise very badly. And of, wow. like, the main thing I saw there was that Hinla followed Stealth around through the mid lane instead of trying to cut off the route completely. He could have stopped that as all. If, sure. if Hinla dies, that's it's not a big deal. It's a support. Who cares about Well, him? the issue is if Hinla dies and they go for the Fire Giant, there's oh, no one to handle. That's hand a it. good point. That's a good point. I mean, though, it's probably better to sack the support and let them get the Fire Giant and maybe get a chance for Nua than, you know, give up everything. But I, I wouldn't put that on Jeff so much as, you know, they went into that fight. Omega just went a little bit too hard. He got caught, and Stealth just couldn't find the damage. Yep, and so that is actually going to be the Void Stone coming out of the bush. Yep. I so like that it. he's going to be a little bit... Uh going to be a little bit more annoying here in the lane. And there's the Lost Artifact getting started as well in the first slot. Now, he could go into Chronos Pendant here. Uh, okay. Now he ha but the issue is he has a ton of damage from Morlock Sash, an immense amount of damage from Thoth. He has a lot of penetration as well. Rod of Tahuti would really spell this build out. He would be such a monster. I mean, you look at the board right now. He's doing a decent amount of damage. He has 20,000 damage done on Ra, highest on his team, uh, as well as 17,000 healing. Yeah, that's... That's a lot. Now, what is the thought process behind the Aegis buy? Just to really stay alive longer in team fights in case he gets yeah, singled I mean, he, out? Basically, he's going to try to force uh, an initiation, okay. look for a bait, try to force abilities onto him, and absorb as much damage into that as possible while his team t uh, counter initiates. That's really what you're looking for with the Aegis. I mean, there was a point in time where there was 10 Aegises on the map. Guaranteed. These days, we see one, two, maybe three. Beats is kind of a hot ticket. A Hand of the Gods, of course, still very strong. And then, of course, Sprint. Well, DVOs now, they should be able to chop through this tier two. No yep. problem at all. Meanwhile, you don't want to see any of that Barracuda is going to try to box Apollo. Speaking he does have chopping, to be a little bit. How is there not a Lumberjack Chalk skin? Lumber, that would lumber be chalk. awesome. He he needs like a big old burly beard though, <laughs> right? And cut off sleeve flannel. Oh yeah, yeah. and pancakes. Now, yeah, no, 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 definitely not anything else. In comes Ionic, really starting to put the pressure down here. This tier two is basically going to be free. They want no peace. In comes Ionic with a big belly flop. Oh, Stealth's already down. Aegis be damned. Jeff Hindler's in trouble. Shield's already wasted. Oh no! Down to the holy god! This is it. There's nothing they're going to do here. Andy stays alive or Andy goes wow. down. Doesn't matter. Gars with the triple. Phoenix goes down. D aside. Everyone's at full health. And Cog Red's going to take it. So what looked like it was going to be a super long game ends up only being 36 minutes long. That Where's fire going? giant. Where's he going? That fire. Oh, he's just, he's just galloping around on his Clydesdale. I think it's a Clydesdale. It could be a quarter horse. I don't know how many hands it is. I don't know. It's a type of horse. Okay. The Clydesdale's the one that's you, like from horses? the Budweiser commercials. You into horses? That was from Virginia. That's all right. I had a horse. Okay. Yeah, he passed. It's whatever. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> so dark. Oh, my God. Um, damage. Stealth actually takes top honors here. Wow. 27K. I mean, that has to be, you know, he gets a huge amount of damage. He gets the triple stun. He's two up by hits 4K. On the middle. I, that's true. But you take a look at the board here. Bush also put up 14,000 in healing. I mean, yeah. you add those two on top of each other. No one was even close. Uh, Chalk putting up 18K, whereas Omega actually put up 25. In the end there, Omega just did not have the, the, the sustainability. Once that weakening curse came out and... Boosh got that double shot right down the line. That was it. Yep. Well, let's let's be honest here. That engagement at the Fire Giant is the difference maker in oh, this absolutely. game. Oh, absolutely. Like, that, that's it. Absolutely. I mean, there, there, that could have went and it was, so much It was different. crazy because it was a great engagement for it, Prime. It was at first, right? I See, I didn't even realize it was turning around. I'm like, wow, this looks like they're going to win. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh uh, well, it looks like we are going to have a replay here. The triple kill coming out of Gars. Let's take a look at this and see his top tier play. I mean, this this guy has just taken this scene. By <laughs> he storm. has, hasn't he? He is amazing. 
Now we're gonna watch it from his perspective. Now, now watch, watch Boosh over on the side here. You're gonna see a huge snipe at right where Gars gets it. Boosh yep. gets the big hit, and now Gars is able to just burn through this easy peasy. There goes Boosh's shot. Gars picks up two kills off of it, and then chases Andy to the background. Beautiful situation. Yeah, and you know, really, Cog Red deserved that win. They yeah. controlled the early, the middle, and the late game. So. I, I'm actually really happy with that. You know, like sometimes you have those games where it's like, ah, should they have won? But this one is like that was a, that was a yep. clean counter initiate and then a clean win at the end for exactly. the guys in Cog Red, uh, and it was amazing because they beat both Prime and they got through their pauses without getting DQ'd. Yeah, that's which is awesome. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's gonna do it for us here from the High Res Studios. This is DM. I'm Gandhi. Thank you guys for watching.